time for the big three. Three stocks, three charts, three trades. Ben Lichtenstein will take us through the charts, here to take us through the trades. Jessica Inskip, Director of Product and Education at Options Play. Good to see you this morning. So how are you feeling about seeing records for the NASDAQ and the S&P today and this week? I think it's so interesting. I actually paid attention ever so closely to the hearing that we had with Fed Powell yesterday, and I really like to attribute it to those Taylor Swift fans. It's it's just what the Swifties do, dissecting those words, trying to understand if there's any indication. But what I took away from that is he needs to see consistent data, but not better data. And I saw that to be much more dovish than usual, and I think that attributes to this rally. But everything really points back to AI, that increase in productivity. It's like a big puzzle that's coming together that supports these rallies. Yeah. Yeah, understood. I mean, there's a lot of hype on AI and all different themes that we've been seeing, a more of a broad-based rally people have been noting this week. You're turning your attention over to pharma and looking at Eli Lilly, Jessica. Why is that? Absolutely. Nicole, I know you know the hype because you're always on top of everything. The GLP ones taking the world by storm and we're in the midst of a technology revolution and a medical revolution and they're all going to be integrated mm -hmm. at some point. But yeah, so those, those scripts are in demand. It's 14% year over year from data that was pulled from B of A Global Research. And from the GP1's demand specifically, it's 14% obesity and 86% diabetes. And I know there was a lot of talk about Nova versus Eli Lilly, those two powerhouses that don't have the entire GLP-1 market share as in their other players, but they certainly have 99% of it. Nova owns the majority of it, about 54%. But I think Eli Lilly is on the on the road and on the path to gain more of that market share due to their latest approval of Z Pound. So I think that's a good one to add to your longer term portfolio. All right, one to watch. Um, it's at 766 yeah. today, Ben. Um, your thoughts, Ben? Yeah, this is uh, one that's been trending higher across multiple time frames and. Uh, uh, it, one where the chart really stacks up and is supportive of the fundamentals that Jessica just laid out here. I wanted to begin with just some of the price activity we've seen, Nicole, since the beginning of the year, a very well-defined trend up. You can see migration of value to the upside. You can see areas of consolidation where the markets pause and kind of regain composure, but we're currently balancing right around the 765 level. So again, forming a bit of a area of consolidation here. Now, I went ahead and looked. It's been a while since we looked at shares of LLY. In fact, last time we looked, we had established a bit of a balance area that was forming around this 560 area. It looks like it was beginning middle of November last year. Well, I think what we can do is we can establish that, well, this became a bit more elongated, right? So we can just kind of draw this line out here. And this just kind of gives you a little bit of a snapshot in terms of how we evolve these charts as the trend in this instance has continued higher. And take a look here. You can see that we've now moved away from that 560 balance right here and vertical move to the upside. And you can see again that we're currently balancing around 765. So let's take another step away from this uh, four hour candle charts. So we've gone from looking at the year's price activity to looking at the move up off the lows from, well, we'll call it March, April of last year. Again, 330 up to this current level. And take a look here. One more chart. I just want to show you what's going on with the weekly time frame because we've now drawn this chart out going all the way back to we're talking the spring of uh, 2021. Look at this well-defined trend higher. You can see the significance associated with this balance around 765 that we're forming right now. And yeah, again, just uh, multiple time rates trending higher, supportive of the fundamental narrative that Jessica laid out. All right, understood. And I want to hear more about your specific trading idea on this one, Jessica. Yeah, absolutely. So I think it's a great time whenever we see any pullbacks or we're even getting on those all-time highs. When we're looking at options, I like to look at cash secured puts or bull put spreads when I'm trying to add to my longer term portfolio because this is a little bit higher priced. We can sell a put like we normally would to buy the security, but then buy a further out of the money put just to mitigate any risk. So that's the way that I'm structuring this trade. It's not too directional. It's neutral to bullish. And I think it's important when we layer on the complexity of options that we also have to understand time frame and price targets. And that's why it goes so well with Ben's technicals as well. Yeah, understood. Um, when we look at Broadcom, I mean, a lot of people look to Broadcom for AI, um, that touch of it as well. Your thoughts on Broadcom, which reported its numbers and is down about four and a half percent today. 
That it is. So when it reported its numbers, it looks like that the pipeline wasn't as highly and as anticipated. However, I think they have a strong pipeline. That's something that some pull forward demand that we're seeing within their earnings that we dig into the details that could happen perhaps could some raise some concerns, but everything points back to AI. I think it's going to continue to do so. And this is the, the narrative that goes in addition to NVIDIA. And I really wanted to bring NVIDIA today. However, I talk about it too much sometimes, um, but I'm yeah. looking at Broadcom. <laughs> it happened. Yeah. Uh, yeah, no, I understand. I understand. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, so but but Dell had a really good quarter. That surprised me. I, I don't know if that surprised you, Nicole, but they had an 80% increase of quarter over quarter demand for AI servers. That's not year over year. That was quarter over quarter. And that that just shows me that we are in this transition from the the B2C that was there, but we're having those large language models that are being created and the resources that are needed to go broader to B2B, which actually takes some time. So I think any pullback is a great opportunity to Add to, to add to their portfolio. So they have an, a strong AI pipeline, even though it was softer. They have software bookings that are looking to nearly double quarter over quarter to about $3 billion in quarter two. And they've got their VMware sales expected to grow 10% quarter over quarter every quarter. So I think there is a lot of upwards momentum that is still there for Broadcom because we need those data servers just as much or maybe a little bit less than those NVIDIA chips. <laughs> All right, Ben, take a look at the chart of Broadcom for us, please. Yeah, I heard Jessica mention the strong pipeline a couple times, and I think uh, what we're seeing in terms of price activity is probably a reflection of how investors have real strong demand for shares of AVGO. And while I think a lot of people like Jessica are a little bit concerned about how much we've been talking about NVIDIA, this is probably one of the names to keep an eye on in the coming weeks as we see strength here as well. Take a look. First and foremost, well-defined trend up. I've got a hourly candle chart. And similar to our look at Lilly, we're just going to start with the beginning of the year. Price activity we've seen, well-defined migration of value. In this instance, three areas where the market kind of paused, regained composure. You can see that vertical separation, which stacks up and provides this pretty well-defined staircase type pattern, right? Easily identifiable, bottom left, top right. The thing I'm noticing is we're kind of working our way into the lower extreme of this range that we We've been in around 1380, so that could be stacking up for another buy opportunity for those that want to participate in this longer term trend of the upside. Otherwise, you basically have to wait for a breakout to the upside, which is a bit more aggressive approach towards trading it. So again, I like to look for that failed attempt at the lower extreme in an upward trending environment to try and participate. You basically hold on, hope it continues. And in this instance, that's what the bulls have been doing, and they've been rewarded handsomely for it. Take a look. We're adding a little time on this going back to May of uh, 2020 beginning of 2021 you can see or I'm sorry 2019 beginning of 2020 you can see well-defined trend higher stock bottomed out around 150 155 look at this recently topping out at 1438 I mean a very well-defined trend environment here daily candle chart here again going back to uh, the spring of 2020 2019 take a look here one more chart just to really emphasize the high conviction associated with this move up that we're seeing right now you can also see where the market kind of paused and sort of uh, took a breath but at this point after breaking out of this 840 range look at this you've seen a big vertical move up here higher highs and higher lows with conviction this is uh, an example of a stock where the bulls appear to be in charge here nicole and again kind of stacking up and feeding into that fundamental narrative that we've seen as far as tech and some of these individual names associated with it uh yeah and when we think about uh, the bulls here and broadcom I mean, all these AI names have certainly gotten a lot of love. Mm -hmm. We have the AI5. I was looking at those names, right? Broadcom, AMD, NVIDIA, Microsoft, and Taiwan Semi. Um, tell me a little bit about how you think this one's, where it's headed. It's down 4% today at 1344. Jessica, what's your idea about a trade for this? Absolutely. So this is where, this is a, a expensive stock in terms of price, not valuation. So when we're utilizing options, this could be utilized as a sense of leverage. Now, you know, again, it increases risk, but there's leverage that you can utilize to have less capital because it is a $1,300, $1,400 stock. So doing a bull call spread, you buying the 1340, so slightly in the money below the current market price, selling the 1580s, and I'm going out about 45 days to April 19th, that's going to cost me $6,000 altogether. But the way that I'm 
structuring that is I am allowing myself to capitalize on additional capital appreciation. So as Broadcom reaches 1580, I've capped my max gain potential there. So my max reward is actually about $18,000 altogether with a cost of 6,000. And when we're trading options from a leverage perspective, I wanna make sure that that risk to reward is very skewed in the reward favor. And this was favorable in terms of options pricing, hence the way I structured it. All right, thank you for that. And then when you take a look at Apple, which people love for the long term, I mean, they have loved it forever, but the shareholders have not been rewarded in the same way as some of the other Magnificent Seven of late. There have just been some headlines, some headwinds, um, you know, no great product out, just a lot of uh, bumps in the road of late for Apple, right? Epic Games, the sales are falling in China. But, you know, I had a guest yesterday who said, look, I still like Apple for the long term. So tell me a little bit about how you view Apple today, Jessica. Yeah, absolutely. And I, I agree. I, I love Apple for the long term. And we need to take a look at the headlines, but also take a step back and see through the trees. So if they have decreasing sa sales because of Huawei and they were down, I believe it was 24%, they also have increased market in India. So there's other opportunities that can make up for that, as well as the increase in services and revenue that we saw there last quarter. But if we take even a step back further, going back even to the pandemic, Apple was one of the tech darlings that did not overhire during COVID and subsequently did not have to have a large amount of layoffs. And that shows to me that they have good management structure. And that's something that I, I would love to stand behind. So when we have headlines with the dropping the EV sales, well, they're sending cash elsewhere. And if you're running a company, that's very smart to do is to make sure that you're always optimizing. If it's not working for you, move on to the next one. So I actually see that as a positive and that downturn, once we find support is a great way to, to add these items to your longer term portfolio. And I, I know I'm ranting there for a little bit, Nicole, but it's, it's an AI sleeper. They've had a AI chat GPT model since July of last year. And on top of that, if you can actually go to, they have a, a, a research and learning and development site themselves, there are so many job openings on there, which tells me that they're doing something. We've got WWDC in June. I'm adding on to this longer term portfolio because something is coming. And when it comes, we'll see, we'll, we'll definitely see a rally in my opinion. Yeah, it's funny. You're the second person this week who thinks uh, Apple has something up their sleeve pertaining to AI. Um, we know that some of the people that were in the car business there uh, got moved over. Others will be laid off, but no more EV car from Apple. That development is done, um, but moving on. Let's take a look. Apple chart, 171. Ben. Well, let's queue up the more granular time frame I have here. It's an hourly because Jessica was talking about when something happens. Uh, well, we're going to see it happen. When we see a change in terms of price activity, it's going to occur first on that hourly candle chart. So far, I think this is tying into what Jessica was talking about in terms of Broadcom, a pretty well-defined uh, scenario that's playing out. We have a good risk-reward scenario because on the short term, we're trending lower, but on the longer term, that bullish uh, uh, longer term trend is still intact here. Let's begin, first and foremost, as mentioned, with a hourly candle chart. And you can see of the two, three names we looked at, this is the one that's been on the decline, right? Since the beginning of the year, stock topped out just shy of 200. You can see three areas of consolidation that formed at lower and lower levels. We're currently balancing around 70, but look, we're testing the upper extreme of that, potentially starting to form a bit of a bottom. Take out 184, and you're really reversing this downtrend that we've seen. But at this point, again, on the hourly, still looks like the bears are in control here, but we'll see if we're starting to reverse that here over the next couple days. Let's keep an eye on that. And the reason I'm giving the benefit of the doubt to the longer term bulls is because of this chart and the next one we're going to pull up here in just a second. Let's just get a daily candle chart queued up here. We're going back to a uh, beginning of last year, January, stock was trading at those lows. If you remember down around 126, well-defined areas of consolidation that formed at higher and higher levels. Now I did adjust this chart a bit because at one point uh, in the previous discussions regarding Apple, we had drawn a balance area right in that area around 175, 174. But with the recent test lower here, recent test of 160, I think this is uh, the area to watch, and this has kind of just evolved into a larger area consolidation that's formed here. Let's take a step back. So we're, we're looking at 164 in terms of that longer-term trend of the upside. It still remains intact. I see that playing out here as well on the 
a weekly candle chart. So we're going all the way back to April of 2018 here. Again, a stock that's done very well for the bulls long term. You can see again it coming under pressure here right now in its way towards a lower extreme range, but still holding up above 155. Basically not what the bulls want to see in terms of this recent move back into this 170, 175 area, but could be, again, longer-term buy opportunities providing a pretty good setup for a good risk-reward opportunity if you're looking to play Apple in that longer-term play. This trend, pretty well-defined here. This is a weekly chart, again, going back. Uh, we're talking to uh, the spring of 2018, Nicole. Pretty well-defined, bottom left to top right here. This yeah. is what you want to see when you're looking for a trend. Yeah, and look, I mean, it hasn't gone crazy like some of the other names. Jessica, final thoughts here. I think it's a great point, Nicole. It hasn't gone crazy like some of the other names. So I'm waiting for that to happen. But love the weekly view when we're going long term. And yeah, I agree. All right. Great to see you both. We'll leave it right there. Jessica Inskip and Ben Lichtenstein for the big three today. Thank you so much.